Okay, this is the next tutorial in the IT Crash Course, and this one is going to be covering your scope. Now, scope is a very important concept to understand when you're programming because your scope defines what you can access from where. So what it means is the more you zoom in into your program, the less you can actually see. So if you think of like a, um, if you had a gun and you had a scope, you can see a lot in that small area and then you can't see anything outside of it, right? So with your scope, you basically want to make sure that anything that you need access to is visible in that area. So if these areas are defined by these braces, so this green area is one part of my scope. So anything I create inside here is only accessible inside here. So if I create a uh, reference to class object of be here, I can't then access this in a different function because it doesn't exist there. It only exists inside this little scope, right? So this is good for um, resource usage because it means that as soon as this is ended, this reference doesn't need it to be there anymore. So it gets deleted, it gets removed because you don't need it anymore. You don't need to store it anymore. So it's gone. So the only thing that you'd really need to store are things that need to be accessed from different parts of either the program or from different functions. So this saves up memory allocation and resource usage. And also it makes sure that whenever you create something, it's only accessible where you want it to be accessible. So the reason that this is so useful is that it can prevent people that might be looking into your program from being able to um, alter different things and then ch uh, that might change things at different parts of the program. So you only have stuff that you want to be visible from that scope inside that scope. So inside OB here, so inside main, I have a new class object, right? So that's been created and that can be used anywhere inside of this main, right? But that being said, if I create something else in here, so my string here, my string can't be called from object because it's not part of the object, right? So it's only what's inside of this little scope area. Um, on that note, if I wanted to access, say, string s, I could do this, like s, there, I've called it. It's already existing because it's outside, if it's in the enclosing scope. It's in the actual class, so that means that it's accessible inside of this method or function. I can do whatever I want to it. So I can set it to be something new. Or I can, um, I don't think you can null it, but um, I can print it or anything like that as well. So I can add it to other things. I can edit directly. So it gives you direct access to that variable as opposed to doing something using like this. So using functions here, um, we do give it an integer given two integers. So if I wanted to pass an integer from this one here into this function, I'd have to pass it using a reference here. Now that wouldn't actually give them a reference to this because it wouldn't exist anymore because the function's over, but it would give them whatever value it last was. So scope is something that a lot of people struggle to wrap their head around. Um, you can basically look at it in a um, a series of, um, say you had a series of square platforms that slowly went down into the center. They can't get out, but they can all get in, right? So everything can come into there, but nothing can get out of there, okay? So if you learn how to use scope, you can pretty much make your programs run a lot better, and you can make sure that you don't run into any of those issues where you think you should be able to access things and you can't. That said, if I, for some reason, needed to access my string, I should have created an, a reference to it in the public up here. So if I wanted access to my string, I could be like, all right, well, I still want to access it in here, but I also want to have it here. So I'm just going to put it here first, and then I'll make sure that it's not trying to create it again. And now, as you can see, I have a reference to it in the public. So so it's called um called the uh the global variable, right? So I have a global variable reference to my string. Okay, so now I can reference it from this, and if I wanted to reference it from here, I could do like that, but just like normal. If I want to reset it or whatever, right? It's important to understand scope because um, it's a very, um, it's a very good way of organizing your project.